please ignore the whirring of my bread maker behind me. Um, I'm making bread to go with dinner. Dinner tonight, well, first story. A couple weeks ago, I think, maybe a week ago, I walked outside on, and saw on my porch next to boxes that the mail lady had brought. The someone had brought me a butternut squash with a note that said, organically grown for you. <laughs> and I was like, I'm pretty sure it was the neighbors in the Midwest. Apparently it's a thing to just randomly leave squashes in your neighbors and friends, cars, porches. You've got too much zucchini, yellow crooked neck squash, butternut squash, acorn squash. You just kind of offload it onto other people. But it's gonna be dinner tonight. I'm going to make a roasted butternut squash pasta dish. It's like a, a pasta bake. So we have to start by roasting this squash. I think cutting up a Winter squash is one of the hardest parts of cooking them because they are so bloody hard. So we're just gonna kind of awkwardly saw through this thing. will become soup later. <sighs> Do not come to me for knife skills. It is not, it's not my forte. Um, I kind of just muddled through. inside you have all these beautiful seeds and guts that will be fed to my chickens. I have to admit I'm really excited to see a homegrown winter squash. They never did very well for me in Houston. Uh, the squash borers always inevitably got my squash. It's very sad. So there's hope for future, for future squash growing endeavors. pour some olive oil gently <laughs> you know drizzle some olive oil on there so it doesn't dry out uh, we're gonna put this in the oven on um, 350 for about 25 minutes we don't want to roast it completely we just want to soften up so it's easier to peel easier to cut up etc hey guys I brought something for you Find that my chickens really like squash and squash seeds. So I've pulled my two squash halves out of the oven. Um, 
the baking sheet that I used is not my favorite one for this type of thing because there's no lip on it. I showed in my chicken stock video how I like having a lip around the edge of some of my baking sheets. Guess what happened? This guy slid right off into the oven, which meant I had to like coax it out. I'm gonna end up with way more squash than I anticipated, which is fine. I'll use it in something else tomorrow. Probably some butternut squash soup. If I had baked the squash longer, it would have fallen right out of the skin. My issue what I was running into is the fact that I don't want this to completely lose its structure and its firmness when I bake the pasta dish. That'd be kind of gross. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in my frying pan and let it heat up. Me about medium high heat. So I started by adding a chopped onion to the olive oil in the frying pan. To this, I'm going to add a couple cloves of minced garlic, like freshly minced garlic. this saute until they are aromatic and translucent. We're going to add about a pound of ground hamburger, like the Angus ground hamburger. It's pretty lean. I'm gonna break that into chunks. So why do I add my pasta to my water before it's boiling? It's simple. The process of bringing your water to boil also cooks your pasta. It cooks faster. It's an easy it, life hack, guys. It doesn't make it all mushy like I thought it would. It's kind of like the same as sometimes I will add dry pasta to a baked dish because the juices in the baked dish will soak up into the pasta and cook it while it's baking. Um, excuse me. Come here, Marco. Huh? 
she's getting to that age where she just doesn't care what I think. She's a cat. They don't care what you think anyway, but she especially doesn't care what I think. So we're going to season this with a little bit of fresh pepper. sea salt and some of my favorite Italian herb mix from Penzi's. Cooking isn't like bake baking. There's not a chemistry that's going on. It's not a chemical reaction. You can kind of season things as you see fit to flavor. We're going to add our squash. And we're just going to let all of this cook together. So, to your hamburger, squash, onion, garlic mix, we're going to add about a cup and a half of baby spinach. And we're just going to let that, just going to let that wilt. Everything that we are currently cooking is a cold weather harvested crop. It's a really good seasonal dish for winter and fall. And if you don't have butternut squash, you could substitute acorn squash. Then it's all nicely wilted. Now we're just waiting on our pasta. One of the things I love about this recipe is it is a tr it doesn't have a single tomato in it. Most pasta bakes seem to have tomatoes. They seem to be, it, it's kind of one of those key ingredients in Italian cooking it feels. Um, and I love tomatoes, don't get me wrong, tomatoes are amazing. But the lack of tomatoes makes this a true, fresh, seasonal, autumn and winter meal. Cat again. The pasta's still al dente, but it hasn't even come to a boil yet and it's halfway cooked. So once it does come to a boil, it should be pretty quick from pot to pan. Miranda cooking hack time. The giant slotted spoon reduces your need for a colander when you're cooking pasta. Especially with pasta bakes, you don't have to turn around, strain your pasta, then turn around and add it to your pan. You can just scoop and go.
So the pasta just started boiling. Um, it's been cooking this whole time, as I mentioned. So it is now perfect for this pasta bake. You don't have to use tricolored pasta. I just thought it looked really pretty because it matched the spinach, like the green of the spinach and the orange of the squash. I think making your food pretty kind of elevates everything. It elevates your plate. It's the last of the pasta. We're just going to gently fold the pasta. Oops. I'm going to mix the pasta in carefully. So that it is kind of evenly distributed amongst the squash and the spinach. This is the truly critical step right here. Okay. We're going to add about a third of a cup of mozzarella pearls or mozzarella chunks. If you have mozzarella that you make at home and you want to mix it in. Just tear it into little pieces. Meltiest of cheeses. And then you're going to put in a half a cup of Asiago. It's been shredded. And you're not going to bake this very long because if you bake it for a long time, um, you're going to dry out your pasta. I want to bake it just long enough to melt all the cheese inside. Okay. And so I've been preheating my oven to 350. We're going to put this in for about 15 minutes. So about 10 or 15 minutes later. That is all done. I'm going to plate our pasta, slice up our bread, and serve dinner. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves. Ginny just ran over here from across the yard. Oh! <laughs> They're getting to the good stuff. <laughs>